Hi, my name is Florian. Um, I'm a researcher here at MIT Sloan. And today I'm going to talk to you about a paper that I just recently published two months ago in the review of finance, and that is aggregate confusion, the divergence of ESG rating. This is joint work with Roberto Rigobon and Julian Kerbel from MIT as well, and Zurich, University of Zurich. And we started this project uh, five years ago where there was a lot of talk um, at conferences, practitioners, and academics that ESG ratings do not correlate. And so we wanted to find out why they don't correlate. And we um, came up with a quantitative method um, to attribute the divergence to two, not to three sources. The first source is scope. So do I measure something? Do I measure an issue? Or do I not measure it? Um, that could be, for example, electromagnetic fields. Um, some raters do measure this. Other raters do not measure it. The second source would be weights. So if I agree now on what indicators I actually measure, um, what is their relative importance? For example, do you think that climate change risks are more important or do you think discrimination diversity is more important? And even if you... so, And the third source of divergence is measurement. Measurement um, is how do you actually measure then if you agree on this indicator that you will measure it? How do you measure it? For example, discrimination... Um, we observe the gender pay gap. We observe sexual harassment cases. We observe um, the number of women that get promotions compared to men. But intuitively, you can see that this doesn't really tell you how women are actually treated in the workforce. It just tells you it, it should correlate, but there should be also a, quite a substantial measurement error. And so... Different raters have different approaches to interpret this raw, disclosed data um, from the firms. And this will lead then to um, measurement divergence. And according to our findings, roughly 56% um, uh, of this divergence of this non-agreement between these G raters is due to um, measurement. 38% is due to scope. So what do I include? And the rest, so those um, couple of percent, the six percent that that are left, they are actually due to um, weights divergence. So the relative importance that I give to an indicator in my ESG assessment. And this is the overall finding of our paper. So we also had another finding because we investigated the measurement um, divergence a little bit more. And what we find is, is actually, or let me give you an intuitive example. Um, so you imagine you're back at elementary school and you have the same teacher in almost all classes. Let's say you have six classes with him and yeah, in five classes, you're actually the best in the class. But in the sixth class, you're really not interested. Ge geography is just not your subject. And so you actually, on the exam, you perform, you have quite an average grade, whereas, yeah, but the teacher doesn't know that you just don't care about geography. So he would actually probably most likely give you a better grade than you actually deserve in this last subject. And so this is what we see also with ESG raters. Um, we can see actually uh, statistically in our analysis that the perception that an ESG analyst has of a company will actually guide him in um, the assessment of each indicator. Um, yeah, and we call it the, the rate effect or the halo effect. So our findings do have a couple of um, very important implications. And these implications are, um, for example, that roughly half, a little bit less than half of the divergence is due to the definition of sustainability, due to the definition of ESG. Because scope and weights, so what do I include and how import, relatively important it is, it, yeah, it's just the conceptualization of ESG. And everyone is entitled to their own conceptualization, to their own definition of ESG. 
Hence, you do have here, um, as an asset manager, when you buy those ESG ratings, you should make your due diligence. You should really know if those preferences of the ESG rater actually match your preferences. And if you agree, so if you buy just the raw data and then you come up with your own ESG rating, you should actually look at, um, you should actually, yeah, be able to justify your choices. Mm. So this is one. On the other end, as we said, the main source of divergence is actually measurement. So you should also be okay with the measurement philo philosophy of those ESG raters if you buy their data. This is one point. The other implications is for um, regulators. So in my talks with regulators or with a lot of asset managers, here calls for standardization. But I do disagree with that with them because, first of all, everyone is entitled, as I said, to their own definition of sustainability. Why should the government regulate this? And maybe what is important today will not be important tomorrow. For example, Black Lives Matter changed ESG quite a lot. Um, climate change risks in the last couple of years became more and more important. And so a regulator would need to catch up with it um, constantly. So it is much better, I think, if the market actually, if different players have different offers, and by that um, then have, um, yeah, um, figure out what actually is important. The other reason why I'm against it is because we do not know how to measure certain things. We know, for example, with um, discrimination, as I said, intuitively, there's a lot of measurement error. So what we, if we standardize now um, how to measure discrimination, then we would just standardize a wrong measure or a not perfect measure. And we would avoid or we prevent any future innovation on improvement of those measurement methodologies. This I'm talking now about the interpretation of the raw disclosed data by companies. So I'm very much for um, standardizing disclosure on the firm level, but I'm against standardization on the, on the interpretation level than on the ESG rater level. Um, yeah, because we see, um, we see also in a, in a follow-up paper where we look at measurement error, that actually the measurement, measurement error is quite substantial in those ESG ratings. Mm. So now I actually would like also to talk to about another topic that we hear quite often, um, and that is why can't ESG ratings be as correlated as credit risk ratings? And credit risk ratings, I think they're fairly, the reason why they are so highly correlated is because they only measure one um, issue, and that is credit risk or loss associated to default. Um, you have, so this is actually, and you observe this um, quite measurement error free. Um, it's a binary variable, either you have default or not. And so over the long term, um, credit risk raters can actually improve their methodologies because they observe the outcome and then see if it's actually, um, if their assessment was correct or not and can adjust their model. So there's a natural tendency to converge for all those um, for all those credit risk ratings. With ESG ratings, you don't have that. You have, first of all, you have a multitude of different indicators, and there are up to 184 with some raters. So, and they're kind of apples and bananas. Um, so they have, they're, yeah, they're very different. And second, you do not observe over, over the long run, you do not observe actually how big the measurement error is. And in my opinion, it's very persistent. So even though, for example, you would have new data on discrimination and diversity next month, um, such as the gender pay gap, it, it varied. You still can see that the measurement error is probably very much the same over time. And you do not know, you cannot know if um, how much it is in what direction it goes. So this is actually then a natural reason why um, those yeah, these D ratings will diverge in the future. Um, and they will naturally do so. 
thank you for um, listening and um, yeah, I wish you a great day.